Hello, my name is Michael Hennessy. In this series of videos, Shea Phelan, Kieran Collins and I will visit farmers who are working with the Enable Conservation Tillage Project over the last five years. We will visit these farms throughout the year to see how they're getting on using their establishment system, but also to see how they're controlling grass weeds in these systems, of which some of the weeds are problematic on many of the farms. So today I'm heading down to Garrett Brown's farm uh, down in Wexford. Garrett is farming a min-till system, uh, but he also has some strip till in it as well. Uh, and Garrett is trying to get over some grass weed issues. Um, uh, some of them are around the system wild oats. He's also, of course, got sterile growing there. Uh, my, my name is Garrett Brown. I'm farming here just outside in Escorty in County Wexford. Uh, farm in a partnership with my brother for the last 25 years. Uh, it's an odd tillage operation where we grow a lot of winter cereals, spring cereals, uh, winter oil seed rape and spring beans. Um, we're farming, it's a Clonroach type soil here which would be very free draining, very suitable to spring barley and uh, I'd say the average rainfall is around 800 mil a year. How have you been trying to manoeuvre around the grass weeds to manage the, 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 the issue that's building in those? Well, sure, rotation is the big thing, and um, oil seed rape and beans now are a, a major part of our of our rotation now for uh, taking out the problem weeds. Wild oats is one of your mm. bigger kind of weeds yeah. here, and you have resistance. How did you figure out that you have resistance in your wild oats? Um, it's when you go out and spray a field, and this same patch keeps appearing every year, and you're putting it down to on the day that you did something wrong, but. Now it ended up that it was these same patches were appearing every year. We got the oils or the um, wild oats tested in Oak Park and it proved they were resistant. Also, you have a strip till drill in the system. How does that work, or is that going to become more or less of a part of your system as you go along in the future? Yeah, in 2013, we introduced a strip till into the system. The thinking was um, there'd be less disturbance, it will actually sow into a stubble or at least, and we thought less disturbance would bring up less weeds, but the wild oats still did come through on it and it didn't reduce it a lot. We still use it. This field here is drilled with winter wheat. Uh, with the, we drill our um, beans with it. Um, but mint hill is our main, our main um, sown system, the, the mint hill and the Vatterstad sown. Okay. And that, that only fills in, strip till only strip fills till, in here and there? Strip till fills in when the time you know, if the situation is suitable, we can use it. You can, if you wanted to sow real early, uh, strip till is a good idea. It, if you want to go early with wheat, or um, that's where it fits in. In terms of the lessons you might have learned in here, did you bring much of that out to the rest of your farm in terms of how you're managing your farm now? Yeah, big time, yeah, because uh, when we were part of the group, you just come more aware of uh, your problems with resistant weeds. You just you see them more, you know, if you have a field. And we have, I'd say now, three or four problems identified in fields through uh, being part of the group, and they have proved to be resistant to wild oats. So uh, we're bringing the rotation uh, into the system now to get these patches under control. And being part of the group now has made us really aware of this. Okay. And we have really focused now on our seed. Um, you know, we do use some home safe seed and we're very careful where that's source now and um, machine hygiene then as well, moving combines from known problem fields, we would clean them down before we'd, or we'd leave that field to last, you know, and we'd cut in a different area. Well, it's the middle of June, the weather is still really nice, and I'm heading down here to Garrett Brown's just outside Enniscorty in Wexford. Garrett, who has min till, uh, he's a couple of different crops in the validation area fields this year, so I'm just going to see how he's getting on with the weed control in those fields. On the day, I met Garrett Brown and his tillage advisor, Kieran Hickey, to chat about the validation area and how weed control was going in general on the farm. On each farm, the ECT project selected a field with a high weed burden to monitor management practice. 
The ECT project staff use a grid methodology to count weeds each year before harvest. The results reflected how successful or not the weed control measures worked. On the map, squares coloured blue or green have a low weed population and squares coloured orange or red have a high weed population. So you planted winter wheat in 19, 2019, and then following that then in 2019, you did a few number of multiple stale, or stale seed beds, I should say, and then you went and you planted spring barley and everything then after that. Yeah. How did that work out? Did you use a wild oak control on that? We did, yeah. We used it uh, axial that year, and uh, the spring barley came through clean. In, but uh, despite the fact that you have resistant wild oats to axial use axial anyway, why did you do that? Well, there's other wild oats in the field that axial does kill, so we were taking them out anyway. And uh, if the patches were left, the idea is you would hand draw them. But um, none came up that year, and with no explanation whether why that is. Um, and then coming in then to 2021, then you uh, you were going to put in spring barley then again in 2021. Um, how did that work out? You use axial pro again, did you? Yeah, it was more of the same and um, the patches came up in 2021. They hadn't come up in 2020, so this is why Spring Barley went back in again in 2021 to see had the wild oats gone or whatever, but 2021 they did come back up and um, they were there. Axial was used and um, we tried to uh, hand roll them that year. So at the time of counting, as we can see in that, there's there's a good few wild oats in, in both the stable field and the lawn field, probably more so on the lawn field, the field we're standing in here now. Yeah. Probably a good few in it, but you hand rolled most of those after the count was done? Yeah, after the count was done, we would have done as good a job as we could hand roll it, you know. It's, okay. uh, we, we thought we got most of them anyway. Difficult job though, in fairness. Very difficult, yeah. yeah. It's very difficult to hand roll them, but... Okay. That was done. Yeah. From 22 then? Well, it was spring barley again and there was foxtrot used. Okay. Uh, just to try something different and axial was used as well but they still came through that. The, the patches did. Okay. And um, we tried to hand rogan. It was dry that summer and hand rogan was um, they were breaking off but we got as many as we could. And then in 23 then, it was this fields were split a little bit between the wheat on one side and the spring barley in the other side. Yeah. Why did you stick with spring barley again? Would you not have changed a bit? We would have changed to a different crop, but okay. it was the last year of the project and we kind of knew that um, what would work. We weren't sure about Avidex, uh, that product. So we said we'd go back with spring barley and we'll try Avidex on it and see how that had worked spraying a pre-emergence. Like. So I like the pre-emerge needs nice moisture yeah. to to to, uh, to control which, the wild oats coming through. Yeah, which there was this year at sowing time. That has since changed, but um, time will tell now in the Avidex. But that's why this field was left in barley for this year, just to try that. And in fairness, you used Avidex another year as well, though, didn't you? We did. We used it back, um, not sure what year, but it was a real dry spring and it, it didn't work. Okay, because it's too dry. It was just too dry at, at uh, spraying time. This year it had good conditions to work. So okay. It'll be interesting to see now how that will. And in the winter wheat, what did you use over there? Uh, Broadway Star. Okay. And then. Um, Pretty good control over there. There's, okay. It's, it's took out there, but why we wanted to try the Avidex on this field um, is just a few. We have a few other little areas where we have resistant wild loads, and it'll be nice to know going forward whether that will work when the conditions are right. So, how did the Avidex work again this year? Uh, yeah, the Avidex worked very well this year. We were delighted how it worked. Um, the conditions at sown were good for using the Avidex, so we're delighted how it came out. For the project reasons, we, we just kept this in barley and we're trained different. But going forward, we'll be practicing a better rotation to control uh, wild lots. And of course in this field you have some resistant uh, marigold as well, which makes that rotation trickier as well, does it? It's proven to be a bit trickier when you have resistant wild oats and resistant marigold. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge going forward. Which one do you take out, you know, so... Um, no silver bullet for everything? No, so it's going to have to be uh, decisions made and you could be in some crop you're going to have to try hand rogue where you're going to take out the marigold and 
But look, it'll have to be done, whatever, whatever way. How do you feel the progress of that system has worked? Are you now the expert in it, or is there still learnings that you're learning year on year? It's just every year is different. Like, that's what we've learned. No two years are the same. For us, our soil type does work well. There's a big reduction in labour. If a neighbour of yours came in a very similar system, except his plough-based system, a neighbour came up to you, um, say, tomorrow or the next day, and he kind of said, geez, guys, will you give us a bit of advice of what's, what's the best place to start? What's the key elements that you need if I'm going to try, you know, transition into a strip-till-based system? What would you tell them? Generally, the minute you move into November, it's your time is up if it's wet. Same in the spring, you get going a lot quicker uh, if you're plowing. You have to wait till it dries, otherwise it just won't work. Um, and if he's happy enough to do that, it'll work for him or her. And um, if, uh, if uh, they're going to have a good bit of tillage, they'll have to have crop diversification. They're going to have to put in a rotation. With strip till or you know, grass weeds will become an issue. Like after being in the project, we're finding that ground we're putting in break crops, even though it's not a hundred percent suitable, um, we're putting in break crops now following with winter wheat and it is cleaning upland. So it's uh, it's something we probably wouldn't have done before the project, but our focus going forward will be to continue doing that. So Karen, in terms of the validation area working with the project, what were a few learnings that you, for you, that came out of the project? Key learnings would be that identifying that you have a problem is probably the first and most important step. And it's about being able to have or access expertise. Like to find out if something is resistant or not, is, it's a big job. And then to bring it even a, a step further then to get the backup to be able to come up with programs based on that analysis. And do you think with working with Gareth here on the farm, did you bring, or between the two of you, did you bring some of those learnings out to the broader farm? It was great that, 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 that Gareth was able to kind of bring that to, to, he's in a discussion group and able to say it to other farmers, you know, look, you need to walk your crops. If you see something, don't ignore it. Um, say I have a problem call in someone to have a look at it. And that's really the first step in, 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 in solving the problem is recognizing that you have a problem. So I think the whole project really got the conversation going in this area about grass weeds. And, you know, it wasn't a taboo subject anymore. You know, like if I had resistant wild oats, you know, now you'd ask people and they'd say, no, I have it, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm sorting it out. So it took away a lot of the, the kind of fear factor as well. Like also the realization that, that, that not all control comes in a bottle. You know, constantly growing winter barley after winter barley after winter barley. A lot of it was, you know, learning from, well, this is what I did and I ended up with that problem. I think it's education and awareness is, is, is probably the, the big thing with the project. A huge thanks to all the farmers who shared their experiences along the last five years. If you want more information on all of the farmers, please go to the Chagas website, chagas.ie, and search for the ECT project.